What's up guys, it's Ivan and today we are going to read a successful statement of purpose for MIT's Brain and Cognitive Science PhD program. Before we get into the statement of purpose, I do want to remind you that I offer a statement of purpose review service on the freelance platform called Fiverr which is linked down below. If you want support from me to help you construct a competitive statement of purpose, click the link down below and place an order and I will get started with reviewing your statement of purpose. Growing up as a son of Mexican immigrants, I was raised to value my education in order to obtain better opportunities than what my parents had. An opportunity emerged when my interest in scientifically understanding the human mind enabled me to pursue higher education in neuroscience. I proceeded to leave my hometown of Las Vegas to attend the University of Nevada, Reno, UNR, and pursue a major in neuroscience as part of the honors program. I sought out research experiences at UNR and Columbia University to learn to address important biological questions in neuroscience. During my doctoral studies, and ultimately as a principal investigator, I will use my unique academic and personal background to make new insights into how neural circuits give rise to a rich repertoire of behavior. In the introductory paragraph for the statement of purpose, the applicant does a couple things well. So the first thing is that they get right to the point. So they automatically talk a little bit about their personal background, right? So we learn that he has a Mexican immigrant background and that his parents taught him to value education. So that's he pursued higher education. But I do want you to know that he only uses one sentence to convey that message. He doesn't take a whole paragraph describing his whole background and how that led him to graduate school, etc. Sometimes when you are writing a PhD statement of purpose, for example, you want to get right to the point and want to eliminate fluff. So the applicant does a really good job of sharing his background and the personal reason why he wants to pursue this PhD program in one sentence. So be concise when you're trying to explain your stories and who you are. Don't spend a whole paragraph or two describing your whole life story. The second thing that he does well is that he frames his theme. So as a reader, I am expecting him to talk about his research experience journey in undergrad and beyond, right? And I think it's going to be mostly in undergrad because he mentions that in the introduction. So when you're writing your statement of purpose, you also want to establish a theme right away. So in your introductory paragraph. So what is your whole statement of purpose going to be based off? And this could be a broad theme or a specific theme. So his theme here is showing the committee his research experiences and how that led him to this PhD program at MIT. So I want you to establish a theme and get right to the point with that theme and your paragraph. We also learned a couple of things from him. So we learned that he was in the honors program at the University of Nevada, Reno. So he doesn't, again, doesn't explain a lot about this honors program, but he's alluding to maybe describing some of that experience in the honors program later on in the statement of purpose. And then the last statement here, he describes his his research niche, right? So what I want you to do when you're writing your statement of purpose is that I want you to select a niche in your field. So we know his broader field is neuroscience, but what exactly about neuroscience do you want to study and how does that relate to the program at MIT? So we learned that he wants to study the biological side of neuroscience. Specifically, he wants to conduct research to provide insight on neural circuits to give rise to a rich repertoire of behavior. So that's very specific. He's it's in bi the biological end of neuroscience. He's interested in neural circuits to look at behavior. So I want you to be that specific when you're writing your statement of purpose and when you're writing your introduction. Your introduction for your statement of purpose should provide a brief outline of what the reader should expect to learn more about in the rest of the statement of purpose. So don't go into super detail in your introduction. Instead, I want you to outline what we should expect to learn more about as we read the rest of the statement of purpose. In my first month at UNR, I obtained a research opportunity to be co-mentored by Dr. Alex Keen and Dr. Pavel Masik to study the biological basis of sleep using the fruit fly. My first research project revealed that increased sleep occurs in flies selected for starvation resistance but not desiccation resistance. This finding, which resulted in a co-first author publication in P. Loves One, shed light on the evolution of sleep in response to chronic food or water deprivation. In addition, Dr. Keen and Dr. Masik advice in grant writing has supported me in receiving research support from organizations such as the National Science Foundation. Working with Dr. Keen and Dr. Masik left me fascinated by the pursuit of scientific knowledge and motivated me to obtain a PhD in neuroscience. My career goals in scientific research were heightened when I received the support of the Barry M. Goldwater Scholarship and the recognition for exceptional promise as a scientist. In this next paragraph, the author of the Statement of Purpose describes his first research experience. Again, in the 
introduction, he alluded that he was going to talk about research throughout his statement of purpose. So right away, he gets to the point. So we learn about his research opportunity, which was co-mentored by two professors. So when you are writing paragraphs that are about research or really any opportunity, I want you to mention the names of the mentors or supervisors. So we learn that the mentors here are Dr. Alex Keen and Dr. Pavel Masik. And the reason why it's important for you to name drop the supervisors or mentors is because people in that field, in that program, the, the committee members, they might know who these scientists are, right? And that's going to give you more credibility as a potential PhD student, as a researcher, as a scholar, because you are getting trained by probably some of the best minds in your field. If you don't mention the name of your mentors, then there's no really context and credibility provided to your work. So it's nice to be recognized for that credibility of your work by mentioning the mentors that you are being mentored by. So a couple things that this author does really well. So he gets right into what the research was about. So when you're writing your research statement, part of the statement of purpose, you want to mention a couple things. You want to mention either the questions you're trying to answer, the problem you're trying to solve, the results, how you went about conducting the research, and maybe larger implications. This author decided to just get to the point in terms of the topic and the findings. So he shares that his findings were led to a publication. So he was a co-first author on a publication and that kind of shows the implications of his work. He was filling a gap in the literature and the way that he decided to communicate this was by saying that he was first author on this project that filled a gap. Then he also mentions that this experience led him to receiving more funding for his work. So he received funding from the National Science Foundation as well as the Barry M. Goldwater Scholarship. These two organizations are very prestigious in research and so this shows the committee that this applicant has a lot of credibility. It shows that he has a lot of credibility and that his work is actually pushing the boundaries of his field. Other scholars, other prolific scholars are recognizing the work that he's doing and because of that he's receiving these achievements. So one of the things that I often see in Statement of Purpose when I review them is that people want to showcase all of these great achievements they received but when they mention them in the Statement of Purpose it seems like they're bragging. In this case here this applicant doesn't show like he's just bragging just to brag or just to showcase his achievements. He's actually sharing them for a purpose. And so that's what I want you to do if you decide to showcase your achievements in your statement of purpose. I want you to not brag of them or not just put them because they're great achievements, but you have to have a reason why you're mentioning them. So here his reasoning is that he's trying to showcase that his work is filling a gap and other people are recognizing it. Then he also mentions you know, at the end that this experience really sparked his interest in a PhD in neuroscience. So so when you're writing your paragraphs for the body of your statement of purpose, you want to leave a statement or add a statement that describes why that experience matters to your journey to a PhD. How has that experience shaped your desire to pursue a PhD specifically at this institution, at this program? After Dr. Keen and Dr. Masik's departure from UNR, I joined Dr. Yang Zhang's laboratory where my current research addresses the interaction between internal states such as nutritional status and sleep. While many studies have examined how starvation suppresses sleep. I became curious about how food intake affects sleep. This curiosity turned into my research project when I induced food intake in fruit flies via starvation and I found an increase in sleep. My senior honors thesis project and first author manuscript in preparation seeks to uncover a novel mechanism by which internal nutritional state modules sleep. In Dr. Sain's laboratory, I am driven to think creatively about important biological questions in order to address them in a unique manner. So now now he shares his next project for his honors thesis. Again, I want to remind you that in the introduction, he alluded to being an honor student. So now we're learning about that project. So he talks about, again, his research mentor, Dr. Yang Zing. And in that laboratory, he talks about this project where he is looking at starvation and how that suppresses sleep in fruit flies. And so he mentions what the topic of his project is. Then he mentions kind of a little bit alluding to his results. So he found that induced food in taken fruit flies via starvation leads to increased sleep. So he's showing the committee that he conducted this research. Here's what he found that is pushing the boundaries of his field. Then he also mentions that he is obviously doing this for his senior thesis project, but he's also preparing a first author manuscript. This is important because as a PhD student, you are going to be required or highly encouraged to start publishing your work. So he's showing that as an undergraduate student, he's already gaining these skills that he's 
gonna have to do as a PhD student and if he decides to be a professor and work in academia. So it's showing promise that he's gonna be a great PhD student and academic in his field. As a rising junior at UNR, I was selected to present my work from Dr. Keene's laboratory in a talk at the Neural Circuits and Behavior of Drosophila workshop in Crete, Greece. Discussions with scientific leaders about recent technical advances in neurobiology inspired me to seek out a research experience in a laboratory using these techniques in innovative ways. I applied to the Howard Hughes Medical Institute's Exceptional Research Opportunities Program where I was accepted into Dr. Richard Axel's laboratory at Columbia University. Under the mentorship of two postdoctoral fellows, Dr. Carl Schoonover and Dr. Andrew Fink, I conceived and built a two alternative force choice task essay to trained mice to discriminate between two orders. Moreover, my experience with Dr. Axel's laboratory left me captivated by how optogenetics and two photon microcosm could mechanically link neural circuit dynamics to behavior in unprecedented ways. As a graduate student, I plan on using these tools to address fundamental questions about how neural circuits can support complex cognitive processes. All right, so in this next paragraph, he describes a third research experience. And I'm emphasizing third because because as a PhD student, you are conducting research. A PhD degree is a research-based degree. So when you're writing a statement of purpose, you want to focus on research. And as you can tell, the statement of purpose is really focused on research. And because a prestigious university, MIT, you want to lead with your research experiences. And so here he talks about how as an undergraduate student, he was selected to present his research at this conference in his field in Greece. That's pretty impressive as an undergraduate student because because first he was selected second for a specific conference in his field and then second it was an international conference at that conference he met scientists in his field and that led for him to look for other opportunities that started outside of his university to pursue or he applied for a research opportunity at Columbia University via the Howard Hughes Medical Institute program and this is very impressive because everybody knows Howard Hughes right everybody knows Columbia University so again it's showing that he has credibility in his skill set. He's able to get all of these achievements as an undergraduate student. So he's being very competitive for a program like MIT. So at Howard Hughes, he's actually working under two postdoctoral fellows. So he has two mentors. He mentions again the names of these mentors and what he does with that project. And it seems to me with this paragraph that he's still working on that project and that he wants to pursue this line of work with these tools he designed in this undergraduate research experience at, at Columbia University. As a graduate student, he mentions that in the last sentence of this paragraph. He mentions is that he wants to use these tools as a grad student at MIT. So he's designing these tools as an undergrad and wants to continue to use them to push the boundaries again of the research field at his next step, which is MIT. The accomplishments in the study of neural circuits and behavior by scientists like Dr. K. Tai motivate me to pursue graduate studies at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. As part of MIT's Brain and Cognitive Scientist PhD program, I aim to be trained in and advanced tools in neurobiology to bring an innovative approach to the study of neural circuits basis of behavior. In Dr. Tai's laboratory, I could use optogenetics to study the neural circuits that mediate emotional or motivational states. My previous experience with designing and building two alternative force choice tasks in Dr. Axel's laboratory has taught me how to train mice using averse stimuli, but I seek to take this a step further by probing the neural circuits that motivate the avoidance of pain. Specifically, I would like to to optogenetically silence neural projections from the agnidala to the cerebral cortex and observe mice's ability to seek pleasure or avoid pain. Combining these neural circuit tools with behavior assays in Dr. Choi's laboratory will help me understand how motivational states are translated into behavioral outputs. When you are applying to a PhD program, you have to include a paragraph that gives the committee an idea of what you're going to be studying when you're in that program. So what I call a mini dissertation. So the applicant does a really good job of doing this and explaining what he wants to do. So first he says that he wants to work under Dr. K. Tai's laboratory at MIT. So that's the first thing you have to do. You have to identify either one to three faculty mentors who research interest matches yours that are at that school. Then you want to explain how their expertise and their research experience is going to help advance your research. And so the applicant does a really good job of saying that what he did at Columbia University as an undergraduate student and how he's going to use that under the mentorship of Dr. Tai's expertise, how he's going to advance that work. So he describes it diligently. So he says that he wants to use these tools that he developed at 
Columbia University to look at something different that he didn't look at when he was an undergraduate student. So when you are writing your research thesis paragraph, I want you to make sure that you are detailed in what you want to research when you're at the school, who you want to be mentored by, and how that mentor is going to help you progress in answering your research questions. Along my scientific career, I plan on expanding my research on neural circuits and behavior to incorporate theoretical approaches. As a graduate student in MIT's Brain and Cognitive Science PhD program, I am interested in learning about theoretical modeling and neuroscience by scientists like Dr. Medrad Jazza Yeri and Dr. Jazza Yeri's laboratory, I can apply large-scale electrophysiology to the cerebral cortex as animals use a combination of sensory cues to guide complex motor behavior. These techniques in Dr. Zari's laboratory will train me to analyze dense neural data and build a model that describes the organization of a neural network. Learning these methods will help me reveal quantitative principles that characterize the neural circuits that control sensory motor integration. After my graduate studies, I intend on pursuing a postdoctoral position that will train me to ask the tractable scientific question in experiential and theoretical systems neuroscience, which I can use to lead my own laboratory as a principal investigator. In this next paragraph, the author mentions a second potential mentor that is at MIT that could help him advance his work. In this paragraph, he talks more about the theoretical foundation of what he wants to create. And so he mentions that he wants to be mentored by Dr. Jazagiri, right, in his lab. And then he mentions exactly how that professor expertise is gonna help advance his work. So I want you to identify two faculty members that can help you advance your work based on their expertise and describe how that's gonna work thoroughly. Studying the brain at several levels from psychology to neurobiology has allowed incredible scientific strides to be made in solving the mysteries of the brain. I plan to use my Mexican-American background as a doctoral student and ultimately as a principal investigator to inspire others of a similar minority background to ask bold scientific questions. I believe that this mosaic of perspectives may promote new insights into how the brain operates, much like the mosaic of disciplines on the scientific study of the brain at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. In the concluding paragraph, the author reverts back to who he is. So he talks about his Mexican-American heritage and what he wants to do as a principal investigator and potentially a professor as a career goal and how he hopes to mentor other people who share similar backgrounds as him. So he gives the committee an insight of what the future is going to look like like for him as a scholar, as a principal investigator, once he completes his PhD. So I want you to just do something similar when you're writing your concluding paragraph. In your concluding paragraph, you can talk about, you want to reiterate who you are, your background, your career goals, and what you hope to do in the future as a PhD student and beyond. All right, guys, so that concludes my video on reading a successful statement of purpose for MIT's brain and cognitive science PhD program. Again, if you want support with your statement of purpose, I do offer for a statement of purpose review service on the freelance platform called Fiverr, which is linked down below. I look forward to working with you. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.